them, and therefore is a puppet in the plans of the people who plot out the most long-term schemes of the New World Order. Dr. Paul, Peter Schiff, Gerald Salente, and Webster Tarpley all share in common with AM radio and internet broadcast InfoWars host Alex Jones a general forecast of doom and gloom for the overall path the leaders of the free world are taking us all down. Compared, however, to the apparently retarded optimism of such vapid figureheads as Christine Lagrande of the IMF, Ban Ki-moon of the UN, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton of the U.S. Federal DOD, and Ben Bernanke of the U.S. Federal Reserve, these fringe-thinking radicals who predict doom and gloom look like Albert Einstein and Nikola Tesla's moon children. Their violent silencing of internal dissent. The policy choice to cover up the truth about 9-11 in the official report of the Investigation Committee was not made by any seated elected official at the time. It was decided even before 9-11 was carried out by past presidents and former heads of the CIA such as Richard Helms, George Bush Sr., Dick Cheney, etc. The cover-up of the truth about 9-11 has persisted now for a decade since the morning the event itself happened. There is no truth about 9-11 possible to be known. We, the people of the USA, are gradually coming to accept this. It is no great mystery. The conspiracy did it, regardless of how you slice it or who you blame. Directly or indirectly, it comes back to the seated administration of the federal government of the USA at that time, e.g. the George Bush Jr. administration of neocons, including Karl Rove, Dick Cheney, Condoleezza Rice, John Ashcroft, Colin Powell, Donald Rumsfeld, and Ari Fleischer. These people are criminals for doing 9-11 and deserve to be hung. Rove authored a paper for the Project for a New American Century think tank entitled Constant Conflict, calling for a staged new Pearl Harbor to awaken the average American citizen to the very real threat we face in the 21st century from terrorism. Carl Rove is now a Fox News network anchor and appears frequently on the Bill O'Reilly show. He belongs in a cage like the enemy combatants being held without charge in Gitmo's Camp X-Ray. Not only is the suppression of the truth the sole goal and role of the MSM on TV today, literally right this second. But it has become a matter of military authority as falling under the generalized auspices of the blanket charge of terrorism to tell the truth. For example, a certain private first class PFC named Bradley Manning leaked footage released online by WikiLeaks called Collateral Murder showing the clear-cut video evidence of U.S. soldiers in Iraq accidentally killing an Iraqi journalist from a helicopter because they mistook his camera for a weapon. For this security breach, PFC Bradley Manning has been imprisoned in Camp X-Ray in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, along with the other POW enemy combatants in the illegal War on Terror for over 500 days straight, kept in solitary confinement much of that time and subjected to the same treatment as the other prisoners, including the admitted practice of waterboarding. However, the current show trials in the Kangaroo Court of Ad Hoc Military Tribunals established to try the Gitmo detainee POWs in the War on Terror and PFC Manning are only a run-up to the U.S. petitioning Australia to extradite Julian Assange the other half of WikiLeaks, to whom Manning leaked his video originally. Assange, accused but not officially charged of sex crimes in Sweden, has been held under illegal house arrest in Australia for the same amount of time Manning has been in Gitmo. It is an open secret 
that Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, in her recent visit to Sweden, had on the agenda the extradition of Julian Assange to the USA for a military tribunal-style kangaroo court drama. Such saber-rattling by these petty tyrants of first-world superpower nations is, obviously, so pathetically beneath where we should be as a species by now, it's not even worthy of a troll joke in a YouTube comments section. Ron Paul versus the New World Order Whether Ron Paul is believed to be autonomous and outside of the New World Order's grand plans, or believed to be controlled opposition, operating within the auspices of the rich elite's network of total global control, no one alive now can deny that Ron Paul represents a change to the tone of rhetoric and the vocabulary of the conversation in the MSM and among the globalist rich elite in their planning bodies and steering committees. To resort to a gross metaphor like those thrown up as straw men, hollow arguments made by conspiracy researchers and conspirators alike, Ron Paul is to the rest of the people in his financial and socio-political class a lot like Rain Man, the autistic card-counting character played by Dustin Hoffman. They find him so incredibly annoying, they want to beat the shit out of him. And the only use they can see for him would be in gambling to fix their fiat credit-based economic system, which is already a useless wreck anyway. Nevertheless, Ron Paul has 100% of the populist support to not only sweep the Republican nomination and the USA's 45th presidency, but to lead a full-fledged revolution against the New World Order if he does not win through democracy. The only really serious question worth asking about Dr. Ron Paul is, do his citizen militias outnumber or outgun the private military contractors and ICE agents tasked by the New World Order to man the FEMA camps? The answer to this is the ultimate extent of and the real bottom line below all the rest of this, which is all only icing on the surface compared to this meat of the cake? The answer is yes, obviously, 100% he does. The Tea Party can arm Occupy and easily overthrow the NYPD, ICE, Blackwater, etc. The targets for such a coup d'etat would be obvious as well, and we would see the heads of state roll down the marble hallways of justice as the great wheel would turn in our own lifetimes. The only better question than can a real revolution in Ron Paul's name be accomplished even without him is what would it take to convince Ron Paul to lead Occupy and the Tea Party to unify if he loses the Republican nomination to Mitt Romney? The answer to that question I cannot speak on, since I do not know it. If it were necessary, could Ron Paul, the modern-day Thomas Jefferson of our era also embody a modern George Washington and step up to lead a real, ultimately global revolution against the New World Order? This question deserves serious pondering at this moment in history, before the Republican National Convention, where all the bound delegates allocated to Romney in the MSM will be declared unbound and change their vote to Ron Paul. This seems like one of those historical, now or never, type moments for Ron Paul and his Paulite movement, among whom I would definitely wish to include myself. And even though I am fully confident we will all make it through this tedious intermezzo period before the RNC itself, we are still daily dealing with oppressive MSM ignorance, police brutality, and internet censorship on Facebook and YouTube which recently even went so far as to cancel the account on which most of Ron Paul's videos were posted. It makes the anticipation for an event to come in the later half of this year all the greater to know that even with all this that is going on now, we are still only in the calm before the storm to come. Ron Paul himself does not seem to choose to predict outcomes in his own favor very often. 
He is optimistic at heart, but has a very pessimistic and critically thinking mind. He wants to believe that by implementing the Restore America Now budget plan and issuing executive orders to restation all the foreign deployed service people in the U.S. military and to repeal the Patriot Act, he can wave a magic wand and correct the course of history. However, is this frail-looking septuagenarian alchemical economics wizard truly capable of facing down the devil behind the New World Order's master plans? Ron Paul often quotes the Old Testament scripture of 1 Kings, the book of Samuel, wherein the diaspora of Hebrews following the Exodus and conquering the Canaanites of the Palestinian Holy Land turn to their generation's high priest and prophet Samuel and weighed heavily upon him to appoint a king for them all to serve under as one people, under one man. And Samuel repudiated the Hebrews and said to the effect that if you have a king, he will impose taxes and you will suffer all that follows under such a system. The reason Dr. Paul quotes this scripture in speeches is that it is from the tenth book of the Bible, the first chapter of that book, thus ten one the same as the legal tender stipulation in the Contracts Clause of the U.S. Constitution. Dr. Ron Paul has delivered over 5,000 newborn babies into life in this world, and he believes each of their minds began to form at the moment of conception, when their father's sperm impregnated itself into their mother's ovum. If there were any form of real religion anymore these days, Ron Paul would not just be a saint, he would be the living pope of it. Ideological Differences One could argue that everything Ron Paul has ever said might be a lie, that he personally does not truly believe in, in which he only says to play the role of devil's advocate within the system of the New World Order's de facto present global government, the U.S. Empire. This argument, prima facie, is absurdist because the same argument can be applied a la Descartes methodologies, to the biblical word of God, and thus one would arrive at applying radical doubt to the very voice that gives us reason and reality, destroying our blind faith in a supreme being by replacing the concept of God as a reasonable, negotiable personality with the insanity of a lunatic demon. As the Golden Age Greek saying goes, when Zeus is toppled, the chaos rules and whirlwind reigns. In short, when a doctor comes to offer you medicine, you can choose whether to accept what he is offering you or not, but you should not blame the doctor for simply trying to do his job by offering it to you. The doctor is not your enemy in this case. He is trying to help. Therefore, he is acting as your friend. Ron Paul is definitely on the right side of history in his words and deeds. If these alone are not enough testimony of the man's innermost mind and heart, then let your heart be eased by this. I will vouch for him. In my personal opinion, Ron Paul is the real deal. He truly believes in and means what he says. This should be a great relief, although, as I say also, I fear it falls on too many deaf ears as simply being preaching to the choir of the poor while being ignored by the rich elite. Therefore, if we proceed with the assumption behind us that Ron Paul is the sole exception to that old rule about there being not one honest politician, then we can begin to look at some of the areas where he has already and is currently making headway in his struggle against the New World Order. Primary among these philosophical differences occurs between Dr. Paul's libertarian, limited government, maximum individual liberty politics, and Austrian free market gold coin economics, and the Keynesian statist supply side economics and corporatist funded globalist, all of the protocols of Zion, politics of the New World Order. Ron Paul has repeatedly encouraged people to read economic books by authors other than those who are the only ones taught in U.S. universities such as the Austrian school including Ludwig von Mises, and he has given his highest recommendation to the elegantly oversimplified On the Law by Frederick Bastiat, from which the libertarians draw the definition of government as state violence.